today's Lights On, Lights Off segment, we're gonna be talking about social coupons and more specifically Groupons. What Groupons does is they solicit vendors who have products or services and they email it out to their list in a particular area. We're here in San Diego. And what they'll do is they'll have a minimum required buy. So if they send it out to 100,000 people, they'll set it at, let's say, 1,000 people that they need to buy this deal that offers products or services at a significant discount, usually 50 to 60% off, right? And once it hits 1,000 people, well, then the deal goes live. So what it essentially does is it can offer a small business an incredible amount of volume in a very short period of time, albeit that product or service is going to be at a significantly discounted price. What are, what are your thoughts on this concept? Uh, you know, the, the base of the concept is really good, right? You, you establish basically a, a profit that you need to make in order for this to be effective, right? So you have to be able to sell a certain amount of units. Now, I, I can tell you this is well, uh, they you know, don't, great. Now, you don't know how many are going to be bought or sold. You have a minimum. But there's really, they can give you an idea of what the, how many are going to sure. be sold, but there's a time, that a clock that keeps running that they allow people to buy for throughout that whole day. So Absolutely. now, they probably have their metrics pretty good where they can tell you, we expect 1,500 or 2,000 people to buy, but there's no guarantee. I mean, you could end up with, with three, 4,000 people on a given, given criteria, given buy. The point is there's a minimum that they have to reach and that's what really makes it work for the business, right? Now, having said that, you know, it, it, it's, it's just a question, it, it's a double-edged sword basically the way I look at it. A lot of times, you know, in your business, having an influx of orders coming in at, at any given time, it could be a positive, but at the same time, there's a, some negative aspect to it. You know, most small businesses are not set up in order to serve this huge influx of clients at one time. And what it does is long term, it provides a bad customer experience, which is really as a business owner, what you should be looking at is at your acquisition cost, but then also the live value of a customer. I think that's the most important part about, you know, getting new customers in your funnel. Yeah, and that's that's important to, to think about when you're when you're looking at this. And also with, with Groupons in particular, you don't have the ability to say when the customer is gonna come. Typically it'll be a coupon that'll have an expiration date. So let's say they set it three months out. Well, you can't say, all right, a third comes this month, a third comes the next month, and a third comes, they could all come to your doorstep the next day and say, hey, we want our product or service, and you're gonna have to turn some of those people down inevitably. Well, you know, I've had my thoughts about this. You know, we consider ourselves relatively smart guys, but let me defer to someone a little bit smarter. Those people, little nerds at MIT, they just came out with a new study, and that's what prompted this to be on the segment today, because I, I buy Groupons. As a consumer, I love them. I get great deals on product or service, really, really cheap. But MIT, this study basically points out a lot of the bad things about, and they surveyed over the last year and a half, over 1,000 companies that have participated in Groupons. It's all about the numbers. Right? That's it, right. At the end of it, it's all about the numbers. So you know, And what this survey essentially said is that 40% of the respondents would not use the Groupon service again. 40%. So typically there's been huge spikes in volume, but 40% of these companies said they would not even think about using them again in their business. And the reasons that they cite, they were not able to turn a profit on the consumers that bought their Groupon. Yeah, you know, and that brings up another point is that when you set up your customer with expectations of always getting a discounted product, you know what, they, they expect it for life. You know, yeah, maybe they'll take action on this huge discount this one time. This could be a great idea for liquidating your inventory, for example. If you have too much inventory that you're trying to move, however, on a regular basis, you're devaluing your service or your product. Well, and that should be, a, again, that's a great point. If you're going to talk about an inventory stock that you're gonna significantly discount or move, well, it better be something you don't plan on restocking or reissuing at a, at a later date. Because what happens is, it's the old technology factor. You know, when, when you started buying big screen TVs or the next big thing that comes out, I, for one, I always wait, yep. right? I always wait, because you know that price is gonna come down. And it's a similar concept here with the Groupon or other significant discounts. I mean, we're here in Pacific Beach, California. I've never paid full price for food. Every day of the week, you can go out to a restaurant in the off season and eat for darn near nothing, cheaper than it costs you to make. So I'm, they're never going to get my full price business. And what what happens is basically you're training your customers, and you know I'm always a bigger fan of 
creating a better value, creating a better experience and, and allowing your customer to come back and you know, be willing to spend a little bit more for that extra experience or extra value that you're adding on. So you don't want to train your customers long term or you know, because there's just no bottom. You know, if, if you're gonna get into price competition, you know, companies have tried it for years and years, and you know, and it ends up being that the biggest company survives, but most companies suffer from it. All right, enough. End of the day. The segment lights on, lights off, man. That's it. What do you got? Lights off, man. Lights off. All right, this brings us to the most important segment of this show today, the get off your ass segment. This is all great information, but at the end of the day, if you watch this video and you sit here and do not implement any of the things we've talked about or any of the ideas, you're wasting your time. So get off your ass and get some of these things done. First step, if you don't have social network profiles, go get them. If you don't know how to set up a social network profile, go find someone that does. There's 500 million people on Facebook. You've got to know somebody on Facebook. Yeah, not, not to mention there's uh, all kinds of uh, companies, etc. You know, hey, if you don't, if you feel like you don't know enough about it, get an intern. Get people, you know, younger people that are in, in colleges, etc. As long as you can give them a little bit of direction, you know, pass on some of the tips you're learning on the show. You know, give them direction as to how you can use it in your in your business, and they'll show you the in and out. Well, that's a great point. I mean, college kids, young people that you can bring into your business either as interns or maybe even have kids or family members, nieces or nephews. They know more about Facebook and social media than, than any of us usually do. So that's true. Open up your profiles and get started. If you do have existing accounts, evaluate your social profiles. Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn. Make sure you're looking at those accounts from an ROI, a return on investment perspective. Make sure you're just not throwing money down the drain. That's right. And you know, frankly, organically to grow your accounts, you don't need to spend more than 15 minutes per day uh, on your accounts. Now, again, if you're investing in Facebook ads, etc., make sure you actually lay out the process. You know, one one tool that we use extensively in our business is the mind mapping software, uh, Mindjet. Uh, so you can look it up, check it out. But basically, we map out exactly the steps that need to happen in the process, and how, more importantly, how we're going to be tracking the conversion ratio. Dude, you're giving away all our insider secrets. <laughs> Mindjet software, no, great product. Little tech tip for you, something we use a lot across all our business lines, and and frankly, everyone in our business uses it almost almost daily. And you can convert them to word word outlines. Really, really great software, mindjet.com. So again, what's your ROI? Know your ROI, know the money and time that you're putting into your social media campaigns, and make sure you're getting valuable time and information out of it. So we have a time-saving tip. Conrad, you have over 55,000 Twitter followers, and you have a maxed out Facebook profile. How do you save time? You have all these different profiles out there. Give me one tip that you have that can help you save time in getting information out and keeping your listeners, your followers, your, your Facebook friends up to date with what you're doing. Something, give me something quick. I, I like using uh, tools like uh, uh, TweetDeck or Hootsuite, etc., where you can syndicate actually information into multiple accounts. Now, you know, at times you're going to be submitting that information to individual accounts, so it varies. But you know, oftentimes what I'll do is I'll just put it into one of these uh, uh, tools, TweetDeck again, Hootsuite, etc., and actually send it out the same message into these multiple locations. You know, guess what? You usually have different people following you or, or interacting with you at different social media networks, so it's it's okay to do that. Cool. So. Get off your ass and get some of these things done. To close, a special word to our sponsors. This week's show brought to you by Info Empire from Than Merrill and his team at Fortune Builders. Great event coming up in the middle of November here in sunny San Diego, California. What you're gonna learn, all sorts of really cool social media strategies, product creation, how to market yourself online, and much, much more. Check out the URL below, make sure you get there. Also. Some really good, cool tips on our blog at mindprotein.com. Really great information, some more social media ROI strategies and other campaigns. Definitely leave your name and email address so we can keep in touch and let you know next time our new blog comes out. So make sure you do that as well. Great. From Conrad to Ralph, thanks for watching. We'll be here next week. We'll see you next week.